Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, this evening we're talking about Bill C-33, an act to uh, strengthening our ports and improving rail safety. Uh, one of the uh, ob standard objectives of this bill is to improve supply chain disruptions, which is causing inflation. Uh, it looks like a very substantial bill. It's uh, more than 100 pages long, and it actually amends six or seven uh, acts of this parliament, uh, but when you read through it, you notice that it doesn't really say very much at all. In fact, it doesn't uh, do much at all in, in, in effectively tackling the many challenges that our ports and our infra, uh, transportation infrastructure faces today. Now, I want to focus on the Port of Vancouver, and my colleague has pointed out that its rating isn't very good when compared to other ports, roughly 360 out of 380 or something like that, uh, and compared to the port of um, Rotterdam, the land of his ancestry, mine as well, uh, which is one of the most efficiently run ports, so it can be done. Uh, now, the port of Vancouver, you know, it's a, it's a very crowded piece of real estate, uh, and so that's one of the reasons given why it's maybe not as efficient as some other ports, but of course the Netherlands doesn't have a lot of land either, uh, but still somehow they manage to use what they have very efficiently and very effectively. Uh, and unfortunately, this legislation that is before us today doesn't really tackle those underlying basic problems about uh, supply chain uh, res resiliency and efficiency. So the, the <laughs> my riding of Langley, which is very close to the Port of Vancouver, it's just like a 45-minute drive, uh, every day experiences the presence of the Port of Vancouver. So many trains coming through. Uh, every day it's the main line of the CP and the CN runs through there as well. Uh, there's trains coming in uh, with empty container cars, trains going out with full uh, containers heading out to the rest of Canada and heading down into the United States. Now, CN and CP have been good, responsible corporate citizens. They've uh, partnered with the Port of uh, Vancouver in the last decade or so to build some overpasses so that traffic can keep on flowing more or less smoothly. Now, I say more or less because it's not perfect. There's always room for improvement. Uh, and if anybody from CP or CN or the Port Authority is listening uh, right now to this speech at this uh, hour of the night, they will know what I'm talking about, that, the, that although the overpasses were very grateful for them, uh, would have been better placed at 200th Street uh, at the Fra uh, Fraser Highway crossing close to the Langley Bypass and to the uh, new uh, 216th Street close to the new interchange with, uh, with, with the freeway. So there's still work to be done. There needs to be improvement. And that brings me to another local issue, and that is Roberts Bank is going to be expanded. Now, I think it bears uh, to have a little bit of background. The Port of Vancouver is the largest port in Canada by volume shipped. As a matter of fact, it is big, as big as all the other Canadian ports put together, and we are going to expand it. Now, when I say it's the biggest, you know, it's an amalgamation of three ports uh, some years ago, the Port of Vancouver, the Fraser Port, which has ports on the New Westminster side and the Surrey side, uh, and also uh, Roberts Bank, which is close in the city of Delta. So Roberts Bank is now going to be expanded. The port itself is an island an artificial island that was built in the uh, Georgia Strait, which uh, we nowadays call the Sailor Sea. Uh, it's a big island. There's a causeway that goes out to that with a, with a highway on it and a couple of uh, rail, uh, railroads. And it's going to be expanded. It's going to be double or triple or quadrupled in size. I don't know how much, but it's a very, very significant infrastructure project. And that brings me to La back to Langley. All these trains coming through, the, the traffic is going to increase. So if somebody from CP and CN are listening, or the port, uh, the port of Vancouver, we're going to be looking for some more overpasses just to make sure that Langley keeps on functioning while the port expands. Now, I want to talk about Bill, we're talking about Bill C-33. Now it comes on the heels of the final report on the National Supply Chain Task Force 2022, commissioned by the Minister of Transportation. I just have a quote from there if I can find it, uh, right here. 
A recurring theme in the report is the struggle of both government and industry to cope with the uncertainties arising due to the critical factors such as rapidly changing trade patterns, human and climate caused disruptions, shifting geopolitical risk, and the increased consolidation in major transportation modes. This is important. As a medium-sized player in the global market, Canada is finding it difficult to overcome these challenges. That's the introduction to the report. And uh, the, the uh, authors of the report then dig deeper. And uh, my friend has uh, already raised some of the immediate actions that were called on. I'm going to just take a look at a couple of the longer term ones. Uh, the rec recommendation number one is to establish a supply chain office because the authors know that the supply chain disruptions is one of the biggest problems that we're facing. Unfortunately, this bill doesn't do much about that. Uh, I was at a round table with stakeholders talking about this report and one of, the, one of their concerns, and these were all operators, marine operators, the trains and CP and et cetera, the Port Authority was there too, of course. One of the main concerns was bureaucracy upon bureaucracy upon more bureaucracy. They're looking for efficiencies. These people know how to, how to do their business. They're asking the government to please deregulate, please allow uh, private enterprise to make things more efficient. Uh, a couple of other things that they mentioned. I think this is really important to understand as well. They said to immediately address the significant transportation supply chain labor shortages in Canada. Now, when I talk to uh, employers, not just people in transportation, any employer, they're telling me one of their biggest challenges is not enough people. Uh, I attended a meeting of the Western uh, Shippers Association, and they told me, yes, not enough people, not enough trains, not enough truck drivers, not enough people working on trains, not enough people repairing trucks, not enough people repairing trains. These are the fundamental issues that our transportation system and our ports are facing today. Unfortunately, this report doesn't get into that uh, sufficiently. So um, a couple of weeks ago with the Transportation Committee, I don't, I'm not on that committee, uh, but uh, I tagged along with them to the Port of Prince Rupert. It is the third biggest port in Vancouver, uh, sorry, in Canada after Vancouver and after Montreal. It will soon become the second biggest port because they have huge expansion plans. I applaud that. I think that is a fantastic idea. Uh, it is actually closer to the major Asian ports. And by hours, by rail, it is as quick to Chicago from the Port of Prince Rupert as it is from Vancouver. So I really applaud uh, the expansion of that port they have room, they can uh, build out much more efficiently. So, Mr. Speaker, just to sum up, there are a lot of problems today in our transportation system, in our ports, and this Bill C-33 does not do enough. I think it needs a major rethink. We will be voting against it. Uh, of course, we are in favor of all the things that, that, uh, that, that the minister said that this bill is going to do. We're just saying that it's not doing them. It needs a major rethink. It needs to go back to the drawing boards. The people who drafted this legislation need to, um, need to understand uh, what the real issues are. Now, Mr. Speaker, I have a motion which I would like to read, if I can just find it. Uh, and this motion is being seconded by my colleague from Flamborough, Glanbrook, and it reads as follows, that the motion that we're discussing today be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. Quote, the House declines to give second reading to Bill C-33, an act to amend the Customs Act, the Railway Safety Act, the Transportation of Dangerous Goods Act 1992, the Marine Transportation Security Act, the Canada Transportation Act and the Canada Marine Act, and to make a consequential amendment to another act. Since the bill fails to improve supply chain efficiencies, address rail service reliability, improve labor relations, and weakens the port's ability to fulfill their mandate with an Ottawa knows best approach. That's my motion. Thank you.